Welcome and good day um, everyone. So this video will explain about the method or uh, how to write your lab report, especially for experiment one. For this experiment, it's going to be explained in great detail. However, as you would have expected, for the next experiments, um, you have to do it yourself, eh? especially on the discussion part. Alright, let's have a look at the first part of your report, the components. Number one, you need to have your cover. Yeah, of course, but this is for F2F session. For online session, it's okay. The cover is omitted. And have a look at this cover. You can get it from the photocopy shop. And you have to fill in your particulars. And as for the lecturers in charge, make sure you include the title of your lecturer. Whether it is Miss, yeah, whether it is Mr. and so on. Right? <clears throat> and then, the second part is the objective. Okay, you can write this on your full scap paper or A4 paper, no problem. Right? And to write the objective or objectives, refer to the learning outcomes in your lab manual. Okay, these are the learning outcomes. It says that at the end of this lesson, students should be able to synthesize a zinc chloride compound and determine the formula unit of zinc chloride. So when you write the objective, I have this. I crop this from my students' report. Yeah, so it, you see that. Okay, you have the title up here and then the objective. Number one, to synthesize a zinc chloride compound and number two as shown here. Now, moving on to the next part, we have the theory of introduction. In your manual, this is the introduction given in your manual. Uh, as you can see, it is quite short. However, what you do is, in your report, you need to summarize. The introduction given and add in extra information or eliminate the ones that are not, not needed yeah, when necessary. For example here, if you go through this paragraph, okay, everything is fine except for okay, maybe this example is not necessary. So you can eliminate this part. For example, a compound containing 0.1 mole of silver, okay, and so on. Maybe it's not that um, relevant yeah, to the report. And then, moving on to the second paragraph, it says that in this experiment, a simple compound composed of zinc and chlorine will be prepared. Okay, this is an in in instruction for you. But when you write the report, you have done it. So when you write the report, it must be changed to past, yeah, showing that it has been done. A simple compound composed of zinc and chlorine was prepared and so on. Right? And you can list the apparatus and chemical reagents down here, yeah, after the introduction itself. And then, number four. I, I think you are very familiar with this. When you write the procedures for your lab report, make sure it is written in passive voice. For example, procedure number one, weigh the crucible and record the exact mass. How do you change it to passive voice? Yeah, so it, it, it is converted to something like this. The crucible or a crucible was weighed and the exact mass was recorded. Right? So that is one example. And I believe you can continue with the rest. Okay, the most important part of your report is the results and observations that you record yeah, during the experiment itself. But because you don't get to do the experiment yourself, I'm giving out the results. For you but you need to proceed with the calculation yourself for the mass and cruci of crucible and the lead this is the reading and so on as listed 
and you need to calculate the mass of zinc chloride. Now, how do we calculate the mass of zinc chloride from the given readings up here? Okay, of course, from the first heating and second heating, it is always the last one which is the best. So we take the final mass, which is 57.7762. Yeah. Okay. Remember, this is the mass of crucible, lead and zinc chloride. So to leave us with lead and zinc chloride only, I'm sorry, to leave us with the mass of zinc chloride only, then we need to minus the mass of crucible plus the lead. That is the one here. So 57.3124. And that gives you a reading. Now, knowing the mass of zinc chloride, we can get the mass of chlorine. What do we do? Now, we need to get rid of the mass of zinc. That means, whatever we get here, A, A, minus the mass of zinc powder, up here, 0.2534. And that will give you the mass of chlorine in gram. Right? So that's done. And as for the observation, okay, you have seen from the video that white solid is formed. What do we do with the data? So now I have calculated the mass of zinc and chlorine. And what we do now is we need the AR or the molar mass in this case to calculate the number of moles. You have the mass divided by the molar mass and you should get the number of mole here. And you do the same thing for chlorine. To get the mole ratio, okay, maybe here you will get something like 0 0.003883. Remember to keep the numbers at least four significant figures and chlorine, yeah? whatever the number you get here. You need to calculate this yourself. And to calculate the mole ratio, what you do is you take the number of moles Okay, this is small, yeah? The unit is small. Divided by the smallest number of mole. Okay, so you need to observe zinc, either zinc or chlorine that has the smaller number of mole. So say that it is zinc. You divide by 0 0.03883. Yeah? And you do the same thing here. It should be the same number. Yeah, for chlorine. And this one looks like, yeah, this one here, looks like we are going to get 1 as the answer. And here, you have to calculate and see what you get. If it is a whole number or very close to whole number, maybe 2.01, yeah, 2.1, then it can be rounded off to 2, maybe. yeah. But if you get something like 2.5, 1.5, then you need to keep Multiplying yeah, with a number, with a factor, so that finally you will get a whole number. Maybe, okay, I'm giving you this just as an example. 
you need to calculate what's the actual number of mole. Okay, this is one. Maybe you get this to be something like 1.1. One one. Okay, is are uh, this the simplest ratio? No. Can we round it off to one to two? No. So what we do is we need to multiply this by two. And whatever you do to the number of mole of chlorine, I mean the ratio of chlorine, you do the same thing to the one for zinc. And finally, you will get the ratio to be 2 and 3. That means our formula unit for zinc chloride is zinc 2 and Cl3. Okay, you need to um, you need to write your conclusion. Zinc two, Cl three. So this is the experimental result. Now, how do we write the discussion? Okay, look at the components of discussion. Give comments about the experimental results by comparing it with the standard value. That is the theoretical value. Now, okay, let's have a look at the sample from my um, students. Ex-students, I mean. Now, compare experimental results with the theoretical value and um, state the discrepancy, yeah, the difference. Okay, look at this example. From the results, okay, the formula is unit of zinc chloride was zinc Cl3, which is different from the theoretical value that is zinc Cl2. Okay, something like that. You must compare. Yeah? Um, maybe you can say that the experimental formula unit um, was zinc Cl3, which is slightly uh, different or slightly bigger than the theoretical formula unit that is zinc Cl2. Here you must mention both. Yeah? Now, this is sample number one. Or maybe, okay, look at this student. The, empir the empirical formula is slightly different with the theoretical formula that is zinc Cl2. This discrepancy might happen due to three errors. Okay, this goes to the, um, the, the next part of the discussion. Okay, and maybe uh, this is like what I have mentioned earlier. The experimental formula unit of zinc chloride obtained was zinc Cl. Yeah, this is just um, example. Yeah, you write your formula yeah, that you obtained from the calculation which is slightly different from the theoretical formula unit of zinc chloride that is zinc Cl2. If it is higher or lower, like um, uh, we have uh, measurements and so on, okay, normally you, you, you mention whether it is higher or lower, but now we don't really know, so we just say slightly different. Yeah? And then state the possible errors, mistakes done during the experiment that might have contributed to the discrepancy. Okay, number one, maybe. Okay, look at the video. You need to stir. It says stir the mixer gently using a glass rod. Okay, why gently? Okay, now, you need to stir the mixer gently to avoid splattering the mixture. So you see uh, what the students actually wrote. <clears throat> the substance might have splattered during the stirring process and caused the reduction of amount of zinc chloride. Okay, that is one possible error. You can see that the reaction um, is very vigorous. Yeah? And or maybe you can write something like this. The difference 
or the discrepancy can is also due because uh, due to the reason because the content or the mixture was heated too quickly or the heat was very high yeah high heat to overcome this the content should be heated slowly to avoid it from splattering during the heating process yeah something like that so our focus is we don't want it to splatter right number one and number two okay it says that we need to allow the mixture to cool to room temperature and look at how it is cooled completely covered okay why completely covered okay one of the properties of zinc chloride is it is hygroscopic which means it can easily absorb moisture from the surrounding so if you keep um, remember you need to check this mixture from time to time during heating yeah as well as yeah sometimes we tend to observe for quite some time and during the opening of the lid the absorption can happen right so look at one of the possible um, discussion given the discrepancy might also due to the crucible not quickly covered during the checking process or the cooling period and this means the zinc chloride solid yeah, the hot one was exposed to the atmosphere and it might enable the solid to absorb moisture from the surrounding and that could alter the mass yeah hence the formula you need and what is written down here is similar therefore to avoid this the crucible needs to be covered completely during cooling yeah, to avoid this from happening. Right? So that is maybe point number two. If you have any other possible uh, source of errors or mistakes, you can include um, your own. Yeah? No problem. And maybe, yeah, maybe, the door of the analytical balance was not properly closed. Now remember, the instruction says to get a very stable reading, the doors of the analytical balance must be closed completely. Now why? Now because um, air current or breeze or wind can go in and interfere and give you unstable reading. Right? So normally, most of the time, three should be enough. Okay, but, okay, look at the word here. Any other possible specific error. Specific in this case means it is specific with respect to the experiment. Can we say that, okay, parallax error contribute to the difference or the discrepancy in this experiment? No, because in this experiment, during weighing, we only need approximately 0 0.25 gram. And the volume of HCl needed was not really 10, maybe it can be 15, maybe it can be less than 15, or maybe up until the maximum 20. So parallax error is not one of the sources of error and it is not relevant for this experiment. Right, and the next part in your discussion is you need to answer all the, ex uh, the questions given here. And I think this, you can do it yourself. And finally, you can now write your conclusion. Remember, conclusion should be very brief very concise and it should answer whether the objectives have been met okay look at the first objective the first objective was to synthesize zinc chloride compound and therefore conclusion number one the zinc chloride compound can be synthesized by mixing or reacting zinc powder and hydrochloric acid 
solution. That's it. Yeah, you, you don't introduce new things in conclusion. And conclusion number two was to determine the formula unit of zinc chloride. And what's the formula unit of zinc chloride that you determine? The formula unit of zinc chloride is okay, whatever the result that you get. Don't write the theoretical formula unit here, but it must be experimental formula unit, which is your result. Alright, I hope the explanation is clear. Okay, all the best and hope to see a good report. Yeah, submitted to your Google Classroom.